The following program is sponsored by Happy Science. Thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness. Vyuho Okawa is known as a global visionary because of his deep spiritual insight and commitment to guide the world to a brighter future. To accomplish this, he founded Happy Science Group in 1986, which is now a global movement in over 100 countries. His vision and message to the world goes beyond the differences of race and language, empowering people with love. Together, in this 8th series program, we will explore practical ways on how you can be happy and how you can take part in creating happiness as a society. Thinking about the future can fill us with anxiety or fill us with hope and joy. A lot of us might even be concerned about the future of humanity. Fate and destiny has always been quite a mysterious topic, but what if the truth of fate and destiny was that it isn't set in stone? What if your future was completely yours to build? And that the key to building it was to hold on to hopes and aspirations for the future? But first, let's go to the streets of New York and ask the question, what are your aspirations in life and what are you doing to achieve them? I guess it kind of ties in with the first question. My aspiration in life is just, I just really want to maximize myself to my full potential. I really want to do everything that I can to, to reach my goals, whether it be my career goals or whether it be to touch people some way. I want to create some sort of change. I want the world, I want to create an impact and I want, even if it's one person, to like, um, to feel that. My aspiration in life is to be the best me possible and to help people. At the moment to achieve that, I am helping people. And anybody I can help, I do. I've been in certain situations where I know how people feel. And if anyone needs help and they're down to luck, I'm down to help them. Oh, aspiration, I'm an artist. I always do things, you know, artistically. And my aspiration is to die young as late as possible. <laughs> how about you? Do you have aspirations? Today, we'll explore what you need in order to build your future. Let's begin with Okawa's lecture. When I think back to my younger years, I am reminded of the tough times I had in New York City, where I used to work for a general trading company. I was faced with the difficulties of working in a foreign country and I had my share of struggles with the English language. I was only in my second year with the company when they decided to relocate me from Japan to New York City. Upon my arrival, I was given only five days for a briefing from the colleague whose responsibilities I was assigned to take over. Unfortunately, I was also suffering from the worst jet lag, as this was the first time I had ever gone abroad, with day and night completely reversed. It was impossible to think straight for almost a week. I remember that the briefings felt as if the words came from a distant place. I could hardly comprehend them, even though everything was being explained to me in Japanese. Soon enough, my predecessor disappeared, 
and I was still so spaced out that I could hardly make out the meaning of my own native language. He left for a vacation on the west coast, from where he would head straight for Japan. So there I was, left with a big desk, and chair, a phone, an IBM typewriter, and the Apple II computer created by the famous Steve Jobs. The Apple II was not yet being sold on a full scale in the Japanese market, but it was very popular in the United States, as Americans were already using personal computers by this time. Still, in a groggy state from jet lag, I was at my desk receiving countless phone calls every day. The phone rang anywhere from 100 to 150 times per day. Even worse, all the calls were, of course, in English. The office became a place of terror for me. When I think of those days, I am reminded of the horrible memory of one loathsome word. Callers would often say to me, pardon, or I beg your pardon. In short, they had a difficult time understanding my English, that they were asking me to repeat myself. Being asked three times was enough to make me feel completely discouraged about my English skills. My English was obviously unintelligible to a native speaker. Pardon was not the only word that disheartened me. I also struggled with being asked, is there anyone who can speak English? Obviously, they were requesting to speak with someone else who could speak English better than I could. But when I looked around, all Japanese colleagues who spoke fluent English were engaged in other calls, and all the American employees were equally busy taking their own calls. There was never anyone who could help me. As you can imagine, the first week or so at the new office was filled with a sense of frustration with myself. As soon as I heard callers say, is there anyone, they didn't have to finish their sentence for me to know what they were going to ask. But, of course, there was no one else I could ask to take the call for me. So I gathered my courage. I spoke into the receiver in a deliberately low and deep voice and said, I can. I can. My callers hesitated and paused for a moment out of fear that they may have offended me. This was my chance. I used this pause to my full advantage. As soon as they flinched and paused, I belted out all the words that came to mind. I knew that if I gave them more than two seconds, they would throw the word pardon at me. I also knew that if I got three pardons, it would be over for the little confidence I had left. So I made up my mind not to give them that opportunity. I answered, I can, and quickly fired into the receiver all the English I could think of. Even if they had difficulty understanding what I wanted to say in the beginning, once I had enough time to say more words, they eventually responded, okay, I understand. By telling them as many words as I could that described the context of what I wanted to convey, I was gradually starting to get through to people. This marked my turning point. I completely changed my attitude, and I made up my mind to never again give anyone the chance to say, pardon, to me. It was too humiliating to be asked whether I could switch places with someone who could speak better English. So I made the resolution to say, I can, and explain that there was no one else who could take their call. Of course, it was extremely difficult for me to confidently say, without inward hesitation, that I could speak English when I knew full well that my English skills were lacking. After all, I then had to come up with actual things to say in English. But having the courage to respond to my callers with this boldness marked a valuable beginning for me. I had not studied English as much as I should have before leaving for the United States. 
because I thought I would automatically learn it once I was there. I had completely underestimated how difficult it was going to be. As a result of my ignorance, I went through a tough time, but being forced to work on my skills taught me many things. Many people probably thought that I had a lot of nerve going to the United States with my level of English. But the truth was simply that I had no idea how difficult it was going to be. It had not completely dawned on me at the time that the best of the best from all over the world, as well as all over America, were sent to Wall Street, the site of the New York Stock Exchange in Lower Manhattan. My company had decided to send me there to compete with these top American business people. But I was not yet fully aware of the magnitude of the expectations set upon me. As a result, my new colleagues were appalled that someone like me who had difficulty speaking English fluently, had been sent there. The first week was a tirade of criticism. And with this initiation into the tough world of Wall Street, I began my career practically groveling. Here, I would like to share with the younger generations some of my memories of this time in my life and point out the lessons I learned about how we should think and what we can do to create a positive future for ourselves. Have a dream. This is my message to all members of younger generations who have a long future ahead of them. This is a big topic for everyone. You cannot possibly create a bright future for yourself without a dream to pursue. Know exactly what you want to achieve and make sure to dream big. It is in the very fabric of our nature as human beings to chase our dreams. And if you don't have a dream, you should take it as a valuable sign that you are not yet thinking of your future. If you find yourself without ideals, find your dream and start building your future. The next step is to start making an effort to make your dream come true. You need to have a dream in the first place but you also need to make sure that you work on making it a reality. Don't be just a dreamer waiting for the dream to come to you. Whether your dreams come true depends on how much effort and perseverance you put into them. I do not want anyone to end their lives only dreaming about their ideals. So keep asking yourself, what can I do to make this dream come true? When you start working on your dreams, you first need to have a clear idea of your goals. You can start by setting yourself a big goal then you should set yourself smaller and mid-term goals to aim for on the way. After graduating from Tokyo University, Okawa started working at a trading company and worked at the company's New York office in the World Trade Center building in the 80s. As you saw, by having a dream and making the effort to realize that dream is all it takes to build your future. Furthermore, what is important is for you to set a big goal and then set small and midterm goals as stepping stones to achieve it. The second half contains parts of a lecture given in 2008 when Okawa revisited New York. As you think about your dreams, Make real efforts to make them come true. I have found one common denominator in everyone who has achieved success, and this common denominator is unrelenting persistence. All successful people have made effort upon effort and have kept persevering in pursuit of their dreams. It is not about making an effort just once. 
Success is found in never giving up, in persevering towards your dreams one step at a time. There are no exceptions to this law of success. Luck may bring you one-time successes like winning the lottery or winning a bet, but this kind of success is fleeting. To become successful, first make sure that you have a dream, then conquer your fears through faith, and finally, never stop persevering and make a constant effort toward actualizing your dreams into reality. This mindset of constant effort and devotion is about giving it extra effort even after you have given it all you've got. Where someone else would have stopped and given up, you will think, I'm going to keep going and take another step. Everyone is equally given 24 hours each day. And how we use these hours determines our future. The number of years everyone lives varies. But everyone is given the same exact length of time each day, no matter who you are. So how should we use our 24 hours to find success? There are two things I strongly recommend. One of them is to treasure every little chunk of time, every minute and every second. If you can find 15 minutes or even just 10 minutes in your day, put them to use. It will not get you anywhere to keep putting things off and believing that you will study when you have a large block of time. Please believe that you have a bright future ahead of you. Have faith and live a positive, constructive life. What matters is being positive and productive. Do not think negatively. Think positive, keep looking forward, and the path will open up for you. This is a recipe not only for individual success, but also for a new, brighter future for our entire civilization. Here is New York, uh, my second hometown. More than 25 years ago, I lived in New York, and I worked uh, at one World Trade Center, behind my desk, uh, they could uh, see uh, the Statue of Liberty, and it's my uh, younger days. Uh, New York uh, was a key to success for me. And today's lecture is, is uh, on the way to success. Uh, so, uh, I'll teach uh, some essence is, uh, about the success. New York is, uh, of course, uh, the uh, number one uh, city, uh, largest city of the world. But uh, you must be strong to succeed in their life. Uh, firstly, you need a burning desire uh, to realize uh, your dream. Uh, it's very important. The third point is uh, burning desire. So, burning desire to become great or to become rich or uh, uh, to get higher position or uh, to get more influence or uh, uh, to serve uh, more people. Uh, uh, it's very important. It's a sacred desire is very important. Uh, next, uh, it's a love to others. Oh, you are needed by other people, many people. Many people need such kind of people. Uh, uh, 
a person, uh, uh, a person who uh, teach them, uh, who help them, and who take care of them. Uh, such kind of person or people are required. Now, just change your mind and uh, think about the happiness of other people. It's the second point. And third point of uh, success is uh, please uh, separate uh, uh, success and happiness. The success uh, is not equal to uh, happiness uh, because success has, has, has some kind of shadow in it. When you are uh, focused on uh, success only, you forget something very important. For example, uh, about your family. Um, for example, about your peace of mind. Uh, for example, uh, about uh, afterlife. Uh, it's a shadow of success. Uh, so, uh, as a religion, uh, I must uh, add this point uh, to your success. Uh, you must succeed in this life and after life. Uh, people are easily to deny, to accept uh, the uh, existence of uh, other world, uh, but uh, the existence of other world and uh, the reality that you are not a, a material body only, uh, you have a soul, uh, you have souls, and uh, you are made from a higher uh, being, you, you can find real self after your death. This world is uh, uh, just a school of your uh, training, uh, uh, your soul training. Uh, soul is your own real body. And soul uh, seek for uh, peace of mind. That is uh, uh, real happiness. I recommend that uh, you should have uh, uh, calm mind in you uh, and succeed in this world. They need light. Uh, please light up the darkness of the world. I myself will do my best but I need your help. Uh, please join and uh, work together uh, to light up the darkness of this world. Here in New York, uh, it is a, a center of the world. So you must be strong. Uh, you must be the leader, leader of the world. Let's review the lecture's key points. One trait shared by all successful people is that they work hard. We are all equally given 24 hours. How we use these 24 hours determines our future. Be wise about how you use your small pockets of time, like the time between tasks, traveling to work and school, and free time that pops up during the day. But most importantly, keeping positive will build your future. When you have a burning desire to accomplish your dreams while thinking about the happiness of others, you will succeed. So there you have it. Please try these tips and apply them in your own life. And remember to always dream big. Books by Okawa are available for purchase online or bookstores nationwide. For a catalog of publications, please visit okawabooks.com. 
To learn more about the teachings of Happy Science, visit happy-science.org. At your nearest Happy Science location, you will find all of Ocala's publications and video lectures. We are here to support you in building a bright future. Come join us for weekly Sunday workshops and weekday guided meditations. Your happiness is our mission. Once again, thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness and join us next week where we will be exploring the topic getting rid of negative influences and protecting yourself from spiritual possession. See you next time. I have watched over you for many years, since the moment when you were born. Your first steps, your first bike ride, your first day at school. Your graduation. Your marriage. Your joys. Your sorrows. Yet, through time, you have shown that what you continue to hold in your heart grows stronger and brighter as you persevere, believing that the journey is just as important as your destination. I pray every day that you will see the signs life provides you as a guide and discover that you were born to accomplish great things. Remember who you are. Remember what you were born to do. Become a light for the world. Believe. Be inspired. Again. The preceding program was sponsored by Happy Science.